What's happening, Andy here? I am joined today by Dino from Sharp Electronics. How are you today, Dino? Good, Andy. How are you doing? I am great. I'm here in uh, Rochester, New York. It's not raining for a few minutes. Kind of a, a nice, almost spring-like day. And and you're at uh, you're at your new location. You've got a, a new, relatively new position. Tell us what's happening. What are you doing there at Sharp Electronics? What's your new role there? Sure, Andy. First off, uh, thanks so much for the opportunity uh, to be on the show. I always like watching your your podcasts, video podcasts, you'd say. Uh, yeah, so my new position here is Vice President of Product Management and Production. So I'm responsible for the product management team, which is all products, software solutions, hardware devices, as well as production products. Uh, on top of that, I am responsible for the new production print business unit uh, that was just recently developed here at Sharp. So a lot of uh, a lot of hats. Uh, on top of that, I am responsible for the build out of the Sharp Executive Experience Centers that are being built throughout the country. So different things, uh, all related, of course, and I'm um, pretty excited about you know the next steps here. That's amazing. Build out centers, new portfolio. I didn't realize you were running um, all the entire portfolio like that. So production's got to be kind of fun for you. You were uh, you're picking up. Uh, at, at, you're coming in at a great time. They just launched that um, that production that that press. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, your first time getting to see it. You've probably seen it before, but um, you know, seeing it as a as a product that you're going to sell and build a program around. What what do you think of that? And Tell it. Tell me about you know just your thoughts on the the portfolio that you're inheriting here. Sure. So you know the portfolio of product that I've seen so far with the entire lineup is pretty exceptional. Uh, on top of that, with this really let's call it best in class technology that we're bringing on or have just recently brought on from a production perspective, really sets the stage for Sharp being able to offer the total solution to our dealer community. And I think that's really important because in the past, we've been mainly this office and high-end office and light production, let's call it entry-level production organization. And now with the uh, VP1200S and, and getting ourselves into this space where we have a production color device that has fifth and sixth color capabilities, light packaging capabilities, really rounds out the portfolio of what we can offer to a dealer and allows them to get into environments that maybe they weren't selling with Sharp in the past. Well, it it's a it's a proven technology. You know, it it does very well under several several different labels, and there's a lot of dealers out there that are doing very well with it. So, um, and we saw a ton of interest. You know, at the uh, when I was at the the Sharp dealer meeting at the end of last year, uh, Las Vegas. Um, just it it was it's been funny to watch this. You really haven't had a chance to do it. I have. Um, you know, launching from a program that was one product to, you know, two or three to five to, you know, now you've got a flagship that's, you know, 10 steps ahead of where you were just a couple of years ago. And so, you know, the evolution has been, been really fun to watch. Um, you, you guys are taking, you're taking over a position that, um, you know, has built on security over the years, has built on, uh, um, you know, working with dealers to, 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 at a very close level to help, um, you know, build out those next generations. Now that you're getting your feet wet, um, you, you just had your first trip to Japan, right? I mean, you just got here last month, I think. And and so, uh, by the way, one of our top 10 articles last month, congratulations, Dino. Um, so you did right out, right out of the gate, you were sent to Japan, you know, talk about drinking from a fire hose, a line we used earlier before we started recording, but how did it go? What, what did you see over there? Um, what was that like going over there for your first trip? And and what did they want to show you? What, what did they, you know, what did they, what did they spend your time? What did they fill your time with? Sure. So going a little bit back to the amount of things as far as from when I started to now, it's been about five or five and a half weeks at this point. And I've been able to meet everyone here at corporate office, everyone in the company, uh, because we just did it recently, a couple of weeks ago, a kickoff. And then everybody in our Japanese organization in Japan. So, you know, five, 600 plus people in a matter of, you know, five and a half weeks, which has been amazing uh, to be able to meet all those wonderful people. Uh, so on top of that, 
the opportunity to meet with our engineers and product planning team in Japan and to see what the product roadmap looks like and all the great technologies that are coming across uh, the pond over the next couple of years, which is also very amazing. So really bright future, a lot of amazing uh, opportunities in order to get into these spaces. The portfolio con continues to be invested in. You know, one of the things that uh, was mentioned was that, you know, of course our business is a cash cow business, but you have to feed the cow in order for it to be co continuously uh, a good product and a viable device in the market. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're continuing to invest in our core technologies as well as new technologies in order to continue to drive the business and grow the business. So when you were over there, let, let's talk a little bit about Foxconn. Uh, did they spend much time briefing you on that? I know that is, you know, to stick a step back, Foxconn, the largest electronics, I think the largest electronics company in the world um, still, right? They have a very big contract with Apple. They make a lot of components for the Apple phones. And and so um, Office isn't maybe the biggest part of that company, but it's a part of it. And so opening up that catalog of the types of products that they have, you know, we've seen Foxconn's impact over the years, you know, when Sharp wanted to make their own A4 products, um, you know, they had A4 products within, I think, like 18 months or something. And I think it used to take four years to get something from, from beginning to end. And 18 months, it was rolling off um, off the, off the product line. So, you know, that, and then all of the other stuff they have, and then sharp strategy with future office, um, you know, what, what kind of discussions did you have there? What kind of learning experience did you have about Foxconn and, and anything you can share about, you know, that, that side of the, the sharp? Yeah. Let's just say that there's a lot of tie-ins, right? So there's opportunities to leverage technologies to further enhance, uh, the core business and what we're doing, whether that's from a security perspective or even, you know, uh, environmental and sustainability, uh, in addition to leveraging AI, right? There's a lot going on in tech. And because we're owned by this, you know, huge conglomerate, I think it's an opportunity for us to leverage those technologies to make the core business even better. So I'm very excited about that. I think that is a, a great opportunity and a, a big advantage uh, for our organization, which allows us to kind of be on that cutting edge when it comes to the various technologies that we could use to further enhance the business. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I, I would imagine over the course of the next six to 12 months, you're, you're going to spend quite a bit of time um, hearing about and learning about products that that fit in especially in the smart app office with this synapse am i saying that right uh, the, the synapse program and um right. your software platform to, to kind of automate the the office and tie everything together um we've seen some cool stuff out of that program over the years like i think one of the first things was we were at a conference years ago where they announced a relationship with amazon or i think was it amazon or it might have been i think it was amazon and next thing you know you know that was the first time we we saw those um, voice driven copiers that, you know, I guess in its own specific point of need where maybe, um, you know, maybe there's, there's some sight or vision, you know, issues, right. Uh, I guess it, it could work well there in, in those, but it didn't never really took off the way, you know, at, at the time everyone thought, Oh my gosh, you just put it in there and tell the machine what to do. And I think everybody just decided there's too much talking in the office between that and your, uh, let's just call it Lexi. So I don't set mine off on my desk here right now. But you, you, you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah. You know, before I let you finish on the on the Japan trip, just one last I'll ask one last question. What what did you see out there that you were um, really excited about? That was really something you didn't expect. Uh, just something a little out of the ordinary for for from um, you know your expectations. So they're looking at a number of different new technologies that tie the display business and the office document business together. I won't get into too much detail, but the idea is the diversification of what our current dealers are doing and how they can tie what Sharp does best from a technology perspective together to offer the total solution to, to the customer at the end of the day. And those tie-ins are important when it comes to how do we collaborate better? How do we communicate better? How do we have that consistent 
collaboration in a large office environment where those meeting rooms are continuously working uh, in a way where it's easy for the customer to use, right? So those are some of the technologies that we were talking about. And what blew my mind is, you know, the display technologies uh, that are out there, they continue to enhance them, uh, you know, to be able to leverage that and then tie that into the document business, along with other diversification type opportunities that we've had, such as the Dynabook uh, laptops, you know, the purchase from Toshiba, to be able to add that to the mix. So, you know, to have that total solution for the office, not only for the office, but for the nurses station, for the, uh, the school, you know, these are all great tie-ins. And that's what really differentiates us when it comes to the total technology offering. So that's what was blowing my mind. And being able to be able to tie all those things together is exciting. It has to be nice for a sharp dealer to walk in there and, you know, have their own brand for everything, right? I mean, just have the displays. We use a sharp Aquas board here. Uh, great, 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 not machine, but great display. Great for collaboration. Uh, just getting something up there and, or even storyboarding um, or even just having a little fun with it. It's just, it can be used in a million different ways, right? And and they're nice. they're not expensive. Um, the the Dyna books, you know, it's if you use Windows, it's just another, it doesn't matter what Windows, it's a, it's a Toshiba laptop. I've used right. to use those and now it just has a different name, um, right? I, we, we've um, we've seen those used and great displays they had going at that dealer meeting uh, last year with the Dyna books. I don't, you know, I they, they seem to have a pretty compelling story with their reliability from from what their um, their product people were saying during during their presentations, right? Supposedly they're more reliable than, than traditional or than a lot of uh, other comparable what i would call comparable um laptops that i don't think they do desktops do they They were laptops and convertibles or whatever they they call them um but they, they you know they were nice they were light they and they worked so you know and when, when you're out there selling it and, and they don't and the customer isn't ready for a new new, new copy or new printer right i mean it's not bad to turn around and say you know you have any new people let me know i i've got a whole package for for, for new starters new employees right like a the, the, yeah, the Dynabook product. The Dynabook product uh, has a less than one percent failure rate. It's a light product, lower cost, good alternative to a Chromebook. As a matter of fact, you know, I think many of us know the students when they they grow up with a Chromebook and they get into the real world and they have to use Microsoft and and you know uh, yeah. a PC versus a Mac. So you know, those are the types of things that really set the Dynabook product apart is because we can offer something to. A school, for example, at a low cost and uh, get those students working in the environment that they're going to be doing uh, when they're uh, in the business world. And it's got to be helpful. Um, you know, you, you mentioned something earlier. I do want to before I let you go, I was interested to hear uh, you were tasked with with opening these business centers. What can you tell me about them? Can you can you share uh, possibly what cities they're going to be in? Maybe some of the vision. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish with this? That those are always every now and then a vendor will revamp their, you know, their, their, their customer centers. And it's always amazing to me because I'm a printer nerd and, you know, usually it's heavy. I can't even imagine with you guys with the displays, but what, what's, um, what, what's, what's the deal with that? What are you guys doing with it? Yeah. So the Sharp Executive Experience Centers are, uh, is, again, a big responsibility for, for me personally. And we just opened up our Experience Center here in Montvale. And we're going to be uh, building another one in Santa Ana, California, another one in Chicago. So the idea of the experience centers is to be able to bring our customers in and to see the full gamut of technologies that we were just talking about, whether it's, you know, display boards, the, um, you know, Dynabook and you know, laptop technologies, as well as our document technologies and how all those, all those tie together and provide the full offering to the customer. So one of the things that we're going to be able to do, or we have done already, is change the environment for the customers. So let's, so for example, let's say it's a healthcare uh, customer that comes into the environment. All the displays start talking about the healthcare environment. It's got messaging. It's got their names, logos, information about the healthcare offerings from Sharp, and ties that together nicely so that customer feels confident that we are the customer or the, the manufacturer or vendor that they want to work with. So, you know, to make that experience as personalized as possible is our goal and to help the customer understand what the full gamut of solutions are. So doing these experience centers allows us to really show our cards as far as all the technologies that we have. So the, the last dealer conference, which you weren't at, um, 
was, you know, the room was pretty much divided into more of a vertical market kind of setup, right? And you know, it's not the first time I've seen that, but it's always kind of nice because it really allows you to see everything you do in one space and in, in, in one frame of mind so that you can see, like you said, in an education or in a healthcare or in a, in a law firm, this is how we would set them up from top to bottom, right? So um, you're setting these up with verticals. Is there, how many verticals are you doing? Are you doing them all across the board at each, all three of them or which ones are you focusing on? We're, we're focusing on healthcare and education uh, right now. Uh, yeah. Those are some of the biggest vertical markets. We think that it, that's something that's easy to show uh, in a showroom environment as well. So those are the key things that we're we're honing in on, and those are the biggest opportunities for us as well when it comes to you know tying these technologies together. So yeah, those are the verticals that we've started with, and we'll build out more uh, as we get more creative sure. and, and start bringing in different types of. I mean, we have all types of customers that are coming into our showrooms. Uh, so as we start seeing more of a particular vertical, we may build out and do different uh, ones to focus on those particular verticals as well. And the Montville one is done or it's under it's underway? We just got it done last week. And uh, it was interesting because we had our kickoff and we were bringing every person through the showroom. Uh, so we had over 300 people uh, walk through the showroom and see all the technologies that everybody had really great things to say about it. And we're up and running and ready to go. So if you have any customers you'd like to send our way, uh, please let us know and I'll I'll set it up and I'm happy to have you come, Andy. Uh, Oh, I'll definitely be coming down there. I just uh, very, I think very soon, sooner than later, I'll, I'll be down. So uh, I look forward to that. I look forward to taking a walk through there. Um, thanks so much for for taking some time. To, I know you're pretty busy just getting started here. I'll, um, one last question before I let you go, and then uh, off off you go on the rest of your your week here. But you know, what, any anything you'd like to say to everybody as you're kind of just getting started in this new role? Uh, all the 500 new friends you just met in the last couple of weeks. And, <laughs> Um, any, anything, anything you want to say, here's your, here's your chance. Well, for those of you that are watching from Sharp Electronics, uh, it's been a pleasure to meet everybody and I look forward to working, uh, with all of you and, uh, everyone in the industry moving forward. It's a very exciting opportunity for me and an exciting time in the industry. And, uh, um, I'm, I'm just getting started. So, and Andy, I look forward to working with you, uh, in the future in this new capacity. Well, it's always good catching up with you. You and I go back. Too many years. Um, nobody would believe how many years if I said based on how you look, they would believe it <laughs> if they're looking at me. But uh, anyway, man, this was this was great catching up with you. Congrats on the new role. It was good to see you. Uh, I will take you up on that that tour down there, and uh, me and Jake will come down and and when you got some free time, and we'll we'll take a walk through to see what the new uh, customer center looks like, the innovation center. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, have a great rest of your week. Good. See Seeing you. All right. Thanks a lot, Andy. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.